this isn't the first technological disruption we've had in healthcare and what happened in the past. I, I sort of went to history as a guide for the future. And so I went all the way back to mainframes and, you know, and, and refer, reference information on paper. People were printing books with price, you know, prices on books and you'd go to a pharmacy and they'd look up the price and say, I'm going to charge you $2 for that. And we were the first ones to put that information into a database on a mainframe. And so there, a big, you know, big technological shift. The auto, you know, kind of the information, the computer age, allowed us to create entirely new products. So um, instead of being put out of business, we actually made our business more kind of effective, uh, and then moved on through all these different technological shifts. On to the next big one was the PC, the personal computer, and that led to being able to publish information in kind of in reference format that anybody could access from any computer. So that really took away started to disrupt the textbook and the reference book. Uh, and then obviously the PC gave gave birth to the ability to have an EMR. And then once we had an EMR, well, maybe we could, you know, embed clinical guidance inside the EMR and you wouldn't have to like read pages of text and then go to the EMR and type. And that became embedded clinical decision support or care guidance. And a bunch of studies showed that that was way more effective at improving clinical outcomes than reading something, trying to remember it, and then going to the patient. And that's a big revolution that we all we all we we, we drove and and led at Hearst Health: the order sets and EMRs and care plans for nursing and MCG clinical guidelines and drug information alerts and other types of clinical alerts. A whole panoply of capabilities were developed that were really extracted from flat file reference content. And I think that really set us um, to proving that you really, the right information can have an effect on clinical care, similar to a drug or device, you know, it can reduce mortality. Um, and so that, that's, that's, that was a big shift. And then, and then, you know, over time, distributed computing gave, you know, immense amounts of data to be available to be used clinically. And nobody know, knew what to do with it. So all these businesses showed up and said, we're going to use just data to to do all the stuff you do at Hearst Health. We're just going to use data and we're going to compile data and then we're going to use genomics. And I think a lot of those businesses have stumbled and they haven't been able to really um, convert on that opportunity. I think it's because you still need a, a grounding, a core set of clinical content and guidelines. So we took the data and the genomics and have made our, our, our clinical guidance richer and more precise and more complete. Uh, and so that's how that big data disruption shift uh, was really helped us innovate and grow and extend um, our capabilities. And then you kind of take that natural next step to you got distributed computing and big data. And uh, people have been talking about interoperability across healthcare for decades. And, um, and it never, never went anywhere uh, for a variety of reasons because there wasn't a use case. And, 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 and kind of the, the, the networks weren't efficient and there weren't the standards. But now that we have that, um, we're the pioneers of auto authorization and collaborative care between health plans and hospitals. And that issue is um, more intense now than it's ever been with the auth authorization rules um, being deployed by health plans in greater and greater and greater numbers, which is resulting in the de increasing denials of care. And that tension has gotten so acute that as you heard from John Shreve's comments, that they're rewriting rules at the government level to try to reduce that um, authorization kind of blocking strategy that health plans have. And that that's, you know, I think that our development of collaborative care and author, auto authorization is helping to cut through some of that resistance or friction, I would say. And, and it's real, you know, people, a lot of technology entrepreneurs look at healthcare and say, I want to reduce friction in healthcare and make it more efficient. Well, I would say that's the most obvious way that I think, and the most effective way of reducing friction is this authorization, automa automatically authorizing care and doing it between hospitals, medical groups, pharmacies, and health plans and PBMs. So really exciting stuff there. Uh, and then when you get to the Gen AI and artificial intelligence, um, we were very quick to develop a suite of new products, um, whether it be MCG capabilities and or new types of drug information delivery, um, messages to pharmacists or whether it be home health, um, nursing scheduling. And we've done those quickly and efficiently. We were out front first with these technologies and invested in them. And, and now people are using them in their everyday, so, uh, you know, everyday clinical workflow. So rather than AI and ML coming in and kind of 
putting us out of business, it's been an accelerant to how we deliver things. And I think the same will be with Gen AI and, and huge computing, um, infinite computing and big data. I think we'll just become more able to deliver care more effectively. Uh, and I think over time, uh, you know, I think there's a, a, a future where we'll be able to take somebody's kind of data persona and their genomic persona and potentially predict a course of care for them instead of, we do it very reactively now. We say, I think I should do this for the patient. And then the, the kind of the algorithm checks whether that's right and tells you it's wrong or right. And then you kind of go back and forth. It's like, what if we took the individual and knew their data and their, and obviously confidentially and so on, their clinical makeup. And we said, these are the four most important things you could do for that individual. That'd be pretty revolutionary, right? And then you'd do that first. So that's kind of what the talk was about. Um, and uh, and really looking to answer the question, the anxiety, and try to address the anxiety that comes up when you've got new technological waves coming through um, an industry. <laughs>